This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Good afternoon, my Real News Media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update for September 11, 2023. And in the news this afternoon, Jamaicans among foreign nationals incarcerated in Haiti. More than a dozen Jamaicans are among a significant number of foreign nationals incarcerated in Haiti on several charges including drug trafficking and murder. Police Inspector General Pierre-René Francois told the Haitian Caribbean News Network HCNN that 52 foreigners include 7 Colombians, 13 Jamaicans, 10 from the neighboring Dominican Republic, and the two from the Bahamas have been detained in several detention centers in Haiti. At least 142 inmates died in those last year, many from cholera and other infectious diseases. The police inspector told the HCNN that several of the Colombian detainees were accused of involvement in the assassination of Haitian President Moise. Mr. Moise was assassinated at his private residence overlooking the capital on the night of July 6, 2021, allegedly by a commando team made up mostly of former Colombian soldiers. The other foreign nationals in jails in Haiti are from Uruguay, Bolivia and the United States, Cameroon and Nigeria. There are five others whose nationalities are unknown. Penitentiary officials said relatives of several of the detainees have contacted them through their respective embassies or consulates to learn more about their conditions. Haiti was thrown into chaos with the assassination of Mr. Moyes with rival criminal gangs involved in kidnappings, rapes, murders and several of the country's institutions have broken down. Dayton Campbell appeals for supporters not to attack media workers. People's National Party General Secretary Dr. Dayton Campbell has urged party supporters to allow media workers to undertake their duties without any fear of abuse or any form of attack. Mr. Campbell's comment follows a recent outburst by him at a constituency conference where he labeled the nationwide news network as an incubator for the governing Jamaica Labour Party. Addressing the PNP North Central St. Catherine Constituency Conference on Saturday evening, Dr. Campbell insisted that there is no bad blood between himself and the members of the media and that the supporters should show love to them while they are on duty. Mr. Campbell was also speaking in the wake of last Friday afternoon's brazen shooting incident at the headquarters of Nationwide News Network. No one was wounded in the incident, which left several staff members shaken. Mr. Campbell slammed critics for blaming his comments as the reason behind the shooting at Nationwide and went on to denounce the attack. Prime Minister orders high-level probe of NNN shooting. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has asked Commissioner of Police Major General Anthony Anderson to initiate a high-level probe into the attack on Nationwide News Network. Last Friday, employees at the media house were rattled after a gunman fired three shots into the parking lot at the entity. No one was physically harmed in the attack. Mr. Holness declared on Sunday night that such an incident should not be tolerated, saying the attack was viewed with a grave concern. It cannot be that in Jamaica today, there could be any violent attack on our press that is not to be tolerated in any way, he declared, adding that no political party should be associated with that. Mr. Holness was speaking at a gospel concert staged in Old Harbor St. Catherine by the Jamaica Labour Party's and Era Council too. Curfew imposed in Homestead St. Catherine, seven persons of interest named. The police have imposed a 48-hour curfew in a section of Homestead in the St. Catherine North Police Division. The curfew began at 6 p.m. on Sunday and will remain in effect until 6 p.m. on Tuesday. Deadly gang feuds have gripped the Spanish Town community in recent years. The police say during the hours of the curfew, all persons within its boundaries are required to remain within their premises for 48 hours unless otherwise authorized by the ground commander. The boundaries of the curfew are north from the intersection of 41 Old Harbor Road, Church of God of Prophecy, traveling along the perimeter wall along 400 meters to Valdez Road. East, traveling along an imaginary line, 
going across the Valdez Road about 600 meters to Lawrence Drive. South, end of Eastern Boundary, traveling along Lawrence Drive about 300 meters to Old Harbor Road. West, from the intersection of Lawrence Drive and Old Harbor Main Road, about 500 meters to the starting of the Northern Boundary. Meanwhile, the police have listed several individuals as persons of interest. They say are linked to a number of major crimes, including murders and the shootings in and around the community of Homestead. They are Javan Bossia Singh, otherwise called the Bossy, Keenan Johnson, otherwise called the Top Man, Cleon Simpson, otherwise called the Clans Chargy and the Clancy, Jazeel Campbell, otherwise called the Blacks, Ian Smith, otherwise called on the Bob. Orville Reed, otherwise called Grabba, a man known only as a Daga. The St. Catherine North Police say they are reassuring the public that all information shared will be handled with the utmost confidentiality. Anyone with information can make an anonymous report to Crime Stop at 311 or National Intelligence Bureau tip line at 811 or call the nearest police station. Eight guns seized in St. Anne. The St. Anne police have disclosed that a total of eight firearms were seized in the parish on Sunday afternoon. The weapons were discovered in a house that was occupied by a man who died of natural causes on Saturday. According to the commanding officer for the parish, Superintendent of Police Dwight Powell, police officers proceeded to a house at the Content District, Bohemia, when the weapons were discovered. We proceeded to a premises that was previously occupied by one Mr. Stennett Peart. During our operation at the premises, one revolver affixed with six live cartridges and seven locally manufactured firearms were recovered from the premises. One of these locally manufactured weapons had a 9mm cartridge affixed to it, SSP Powell said. I just want to assure the residents of St. Anne that we continue to work assiduously to rid our parish of illegal firearms. We continue to do what is absolutely necessary to ensure that the law and order is maintained in the jurisdiction, he added. In Zudhai, in grief after slain of student and his parents. In Zud High School in St. Catherine is in deep grief following the execution-style triple murder of a fifth-form student and his parents in Waterloo District in the parish last week. 16-year-old Arlondo Wellington, his mother Sharon Francis Wellington, and her father Omar Wellington were found dead inside their house with hands bound and, according to the police, were shot and their throats slashed on Tuesday morning. In Zud High Principal Carlinton Powell said that the school was left traumatized by the tragedy. I didn't sleep well last night. I was just seeing images. It was one of the rougher days in my entire career, Powell told the news on Wednesday noting that he viewed the graphic images of the deceased bodies that were circulating on social media. In speaking to colleagues who would have taught Arlondo, they are in a state of disbelief, especially based on the gruesome nature of the murder, he added. The principal said that the school reached out to the Ministry of Education to conduct grief counseling sessions for students and the staff affected by the killing. Police said that residents reported hearing explosions after 3 a.m., and when checks were made, the family members were found dead. A man who was listed as a person of interest in the triple murder was shot and killed in a confrontation with the police Wednesday morning. He was identified by his alias, Gaza or Gaza Man. According to senior police sources, a gang conflict has been brewing in Waterloo. In addition to Gaza Man, the police had released the names of six other men as the persons of interest in the murders. They are Demar Williams, otherwise called the Kiki, Othony Laban, otherwise called the Tinkman, a man known only as Buffy, a man known only as Richie, a man known only as Negos, who is said to be overseas, and a man known only as Blacks. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.